What's up, Forkers? It's your boy, Matty Worldwide with Ordinary Forks, and we're going to continue our lessons on how to cook with an electric stove top. If you want to hear my tips and tricks for, for what we got going on uh, in this bite, meet me after the jump. For the rest of you's jag offs, let's rock. It's bite two of episode four, how to cook with electric stove top. So let me be straight with you. Sometimes best laid plans don't always work out how you want them. Here's what I mean by that. So I had this really cool idea. I had a couple cool ideas about how to best show you uh, how to gauge the temperatures on your electric stove top. All fine and well until I realized that water has a common boiling point. So it's always going to boil at a particular time. Although you can kind of measure the times it takes to boil, which can be kind of fun. And then I was like, well, let's try oil. Okay, so I used the thermometer I had, which was not a fryer thermometer. First problem. Second problem. I left it hang out over a high heat uh, coil. Melted that sucker. What I will say is, let me relate this to something common we all probably do at home, which is to cook rice. All right, so boiling water. I think it, you can boil water on my electric stove top up to about four, five, Anything over five most certainly will boil or will just take a little longer. Um, and this is important to cook in rice because everyone knows that uh, you look at the instructions on rice or you just generally know you, you boil the water with the rice in it and then you remove it from the heat. The problem with an electric stove top in something like this is that the heat doesn't dissipate as quickly enough as you would like for a quality rice dish. So, knowing when your water boils is important. Play around with your own stove top. Measure. Uh, measure the time it takes for water to boil. But, have that second coil ready. That's my first tip of this video. So, tip one. If you're doing something that requires a direct modulation of heat on an electric stove top, get two coils ready. Set one of the coils at your boil setting, so mine would be, you know, between eight and high normally, and set another coil at low or one. You get to watch the cat play around potentially behind you too. So that's the ordinary ordinary cat for ordinary forks. <laughs> Tip number two. Get yourself a pan or a nice set of pans with a good thick bottom on it. My preference is for cast iron. But as long as it has a thick bottom, that's really all that matters with an electric stove. Why is that important? So, with the intense heat that radiates off an electric coil, you're going to want something that can absorb that heat and dissipate over a wide uh, area. Thicker bottom pans tend to do this without creating flash points in the pan. Avoiding flash points is important. You don't want to create hot spots when you're trying to saute something and you're heating up your oil. You won't, or you will avoid burning the bottoms of your pans when you're when you're trying to cook a, a soup or a sauce. When you're cooking, um, when you're braising down beef or onions, you'll create less of a surface that you have to deglaze later. Overall, just find yourself a nice thick bottom pan or skillet. My 
My third tip for cooking with an electric stove top is to be patient and use a lower heat first. Something I wanted to bring up in the introduction and something I want to reinforce now is that electric coil uh, heating surfaces, whether it be a glass top or the coil, heat up quick, immediately. It is a pulse of electricity that heats up the metal. So it doesn't require any amount of um, charge up time, much in the way that an electric car has torque immediately an electric stove top has heat immediately. It just depends on the amperage that gets pumped into the coil. So start low and work your way up until you're really used to what you're doing with the dish or the pan that you're working with. Tip four for cooking with an electric stove top. Something that may seem simple enough when I say it, but maybe not so obvious when you're doing it and you're in the flow. Be prepared to remove the pan from the heat if you think you set it for too hot or the coil you're using just gets too hot. There is no shame in modulating heat this way. It allows you to control the overall heat of the dish, the cooking heat of the dish, and it gives you a chance to, to reevaluate your plan for how you want to cook what you're cooking. Tip five, my last tip, but not least tip, is to be patient with yourself when you're learning a new dish on an electric stove top. Why do I say it like that? So when you're out there on the internet looking for recipes, especially if you're a beginner and you don't necessarily know how to cook by taste or smell or experience yet, you're going to see things like medium heat or medium high heat or medium low heat. And these are, for me, very subjective terms. So what you're looking to do is kind of learn by experience in order to best make the dish on hand. So be patient with yourself. You might set it too high. Your, what you believe to be medium high, might actually be somebody's high or medium, right? So tip five is probably the most important. Just be patient with yourself. Be patient with your electric stove top and take time to learn what your medium high is or your medium is. Do not just assume that the person making the recipe knows exactly the type of stove top that you have. And that's how I want get, to get to closing out this uh, bite. Taking less pressure off yourself is the most thing, it, is the best thing an ordinary fork can do for their overall cooking quality. Understanding that the person who writes a recipe doesn't know you, your ability, or the equipment that you have is one of the most important things you can learn, especially now that everything's online and every video is this really nice looking recipe um, that may or may not have the ingredients on it uh, all the time. Explain that. Part of the reason I started this channel was to help people understand that the things that they see aren't necessarily how those of us who learn professionally uh, think about food. I'll reiterate something I said from the introduction is that for me, I've been cooking for almost 30 years with 14 years in a kitchen, in a professional kitchen, and I know how to cook based on knowledge of what things taste like with varying seasoning levels. I know how to cook in the kitchen you're seeing on these first sets of videos because I've been cooking in this kitchen for a long time. If you don't know your equipment, or if you don't have the same equipment someone else has, things might look differently. 
and they might take a, a different approach to cooking them correctly. So be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, and most of all, don't trust everything you see in a cooking video. Now to wrap this bite up, I will apologize. Normally I like to be a little more technical in my bite tunes. I like to show you what I'm doing, maybe provide a practical example to give you something to go off at home. But like I said uh, at the beginning, your boy Maddie kind of melted the thing he was using to show you what's what. Isn't that the story of the entire channel, right? Be patient. Not everything's perfect. Oftentimes things will screw up. This is a very important thing to remember always. If there is one lesson to have at all times in your back pocket is that best laid plans will soon go undone. On that note, for this bite, boy, it's been a rough week. So we are looking forward to tomorrow's relaxation, local, local support, cracking a beer and having some jokes. It's Maddie Worldwide. This is Ordinary Forks. This is episode four, how to cook with a, an electric stove top. I'm going to petition you to help me out. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's keep this local. Let's keep this low key. Let's keep this blue collar. Let's keep it simple, right? Remember this. First, be patient with yourself. But second, it don't have to look good but it darn sure can taste well. I'll see you bite three. Peace out, Jesus.